Now that we've defined quality, so we know for our product what quality means to our customers, we have the dimensions. Now that we've looked at where quality is impacted, so it can be in the product design, the process design, or in our actual production and implementation. So we know what quality is and where it can be impacted. And now we want to um, look at, okay, well, how do we manage quality? We know we want to achieve those um, quality standards. Maybe that is HACCP or ISO 9001. So, so how do we ensure that our the quality in our company is properly managed? Well, if we're going to manage quality, we're probably going to use TQM, Total Quality Management. And you'll recall from an earlier video the three features or components of TQM. What were they? They were uh, customer satisfaction. So we need to be focused on the customer and what the customer wants. Remember, quality is really defined as meeting or exceeding customer expectations. We need to involve everyone. Empower those employees to help us uh, with our quality improvements. And it needs to be a continuous process. So don't just make one change. We need to constantly be looking for ways to improve quality. So how do we, how do, we do this? First, we need to figure out what customers want. Uh, so um, we do marketing research. We collect feedback from our customers, satisfaction surveys. Oh, we understand what they're looking for in a product. That might be focus groups. Okay, So we do research to figure out what our customers want. Then we design a product that will meet their needs. Then we need to design a process to make sure that we can prevent the defects before they happen. And which of our quality gurus said we should do it right the first time? Crosby. All right, so we're going to do it right the first time. The term for that is fail-safing. Because if we're doing it right the first time, uh, we're fail-safing. We're, we're protecting ourselves from failures. So now that we've done that, we need to determine where the mistakes are likely to occur. And this would be like with the HACCP analysis, where we identify those critical control points. Where, are, where is our quality most at risk in the steps that we're taking? Then we need to empower our employees to prevent them. So we need our employees to be knowledgeable about how we make our product and what our customers want so that they can keep an eye throughout the production process as to whether or not we are meeting those customer expectations and that they are able to stop the production line um, when necessary if quality is at risk. And which guru says your employees should have the ability to stop that production line. Who emphasized employee empowerment? Well, that was Fiegenbaum. Okay, so you can see how all of those gurus and their theories are coming together in terms of um, creating quality within your company. So we need to have a way to implement corrective actions. So once we identify an issue, um, or employees identify an issue, we need a way to, to fix it or resolve it keep track of it, and then it's really a continual process. So uh, we continue to look for ways to uh, improve our production, to identify mistakes before they happen, to empower the employees to find mistakes if we don't, and to implement that change. So when we look at TQM versus a traditional model, there, there's difference there in terms of, of the overall mission. So overall mission for a traditional company is to maximize the return on investment. And remember Deming um, pointed out that there's a risk if your emphasis is really on lowering cost, then your cost will actually go up. So with TQM, the focus is on quality. If you improve quality, your costs will go down. So we're looking at continuous improvement. We're focusing on those customer expectations. Your management is really about removing barriers and creating opportunities for your employees to be empowered to make change and help improve it, and not just uh, the traditional role of issuing orders and, and you overseeing employees. 
We want to be able to identify and resolve problems, so the emphasis is really on improvement. When we look at companies uh, like Amazon, for example, Amazon has publicly stated that, you know what, they're okay if their their employees make mistakes periodically. The, the key here is, is, is they're willing to take a bit of a risk in order to, to better the company. So the issue is really to identify uh, problems that occur and make things better, not to assign blame and punish employees uh, who don't do the right thing. So it's more of a team effort to improve the whole organization. You can see other differences between TQM and traditional uh, companies here. Um, most com companies say they aspire to be 2QM, to have these components. Uh, whether they meet all of them uh, is, is more of an issue of looking at each individual company. But most companies will have some kind of strategy related to total quality management. All right, so the key here is that it's a continuous process. How do we do this process continually? And so we're looking at uh, the Deming cycle. The Deming cycle, also called PDSA, Plan, Do, Study, Act, is how you have that continual improvement. So with the plan phase, we need to study the problem and come up with a potential solution. Who's going to do what? What needs to be done? And then how are we going to measure that, the impact of it? Then we need to do, we need to implement our plan on a small scale and then collect and analyze data. So this is our pilot, our test to see if, if our plan will really improve quality. Once we test that, then we need to study the results. So we evaluate the data. How well did our plan match what we think would happen? Does it improve quality? So you really need to be able to collect data in terms of seeing the impact of whatever change you are proposing. Well, once you evaluate the data, if you find that it's effective, then you're going to act. So we're going to take it bigger scale, um, we're going to standardize whatever process that was and implement it company-wide. We then go back to plan. We then find a new issue to address, develop a plan related to it, test it, analyze it, implement it full scale. And so you're continually working on improving uh, your company. Six Sigma is used to manage quality when your company is involved in mass production or what we call a repetitive production process or when you have continuous production. So if you're making a large quantity of standardized or identical goods, then you're likely going to be involved in Six Sigma. Six Sigma is statistical approach to problem solving and quality improvement. The idea with Six Sigma is that if we look at our production as a standard normal distribution, here's where we are on average, and here's one standard deviation out, two standard deviations out. If we go six standard deviations out, that's the teeny tiny tiny tail of our standard normal distribution. We want to have so few defects that the number of defects falls outside of six standard deviations. Essentially, what we're saying is that we only have three or four defects per million parts produced. So when you look at companies that use Six Sigma, uh, they would be like Dow Chemical, uh, Tim Hortons, Kraft, Eli Lilly Pharmaceuticals, Microsoft. They're companies that are doing large production, either repetitive or continuous. But they're making so many products, then they want to get their quality to the point where there's so few defects, there's only three or four defects per million parts. So it's way out in the, in the extremes. So essentially 99.9999% of the time, there's no quality issues. We want those quality issues to be super rare. Well, Six Sigma was created originally by Motorola, 
Okay. And there are a lot of Six Sigma companies today. So if you want to be a Six Sigma company, you have to get the number of defects down and you need to use the Six Sigma strategy uh, to maintain quality. Okay. And so you'll see companies um, promote themselves as a Six Sigma company, saying that they're the highest standard of quality management. So let's look at what's involved in being a Six Sigma company. The first thing you need to do is you need to have a champion. We talk about a champion, we're talking about somebody who's an upper management who will ensure the project's success. So the idea is that not only are we empowering employees uh, to improve the quality of our product, but anytime an employee has a concern or an issue, they have someone in upper management who will help them champion the issue. It will help them fight and argue for it and implement the change. So it's not just about empowering employees the lower level, but it's about tying them uh, to someone in upper management to help um, make that change happen within the company. So we talk about the Six Sigma strategy. The first step is we have to define the problem. So who are our customers? What do they want? What are the defects? Then we need to measure. So we need to compare how we're doing to some desired state. So to some benchmark or to what we designed the product to be. So we need a way to measure how we're doing versus some ideal. We need to be able to analyze. So if we are not at that desired state, so if we don't have conformance, if where we actually are doesn't match what we designed, then we need to be able to analyze it and determine the cause of the problem. Why aren't we there? Or if we're measuring um, how we're doing compared to our benchmark, to our competitor, why aren't we there? So we need to be able to analyze the situation and determine possible causes of the problem. Then we need to be able to uh, improve the situation. So we need to be able to brainstorm, come up with solutions. Okay. Then we need to do what is called control. We need to implement our improvements and monitor them to make sure they are sustainable and that they fix the problem. So define the problem, compare where we are to where we should be, analyze the situation, determine why there's the gap, come up with a solution, implement it, and then make sure that it's sustainable and fixes the problem. Now, many companies are taking Six Sigma even further, and they're doing what is called Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma is a combination of lean production and Six Sigma. So we're going to talk later this semester about lean production, but Six Sigma, you know from here, is to have a very, very small number of defects. Lean production says, well, if we have quality to a very high standard, then we don't need to order a bunch of excess inventory. We can actually uh, be very lean in our production. So we don't have to order a bunch of extra raw materials or parts just in case because we have so few defects that we don't have all that waste to worry about. We don't need all that extra buffer just in case, in case what we produce is defective. We're going to have the quality of such a high level that the inventory we have is essentially just what we need. So Lean Six Sigma says high quality and then it allows us to have less inventory on hand in order to save cost for our company.